Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I am so happy that next week we will be on the field in Oxnard. Now, I'm, I, I got to say, I'm happy that training camp is not in Dallas right now. Thoughts and prayers to everybody in Dallas and the Southwest that is burning up. It is, I think, 107 or 108 right now in Dallas uh, with heat indices about 115. Be careful out there. That heat is no joke. It will literally suck the life out of you, kind of like Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones ha have for me. So back to all of these lists and things. I'll be glad that we'll be talking about actually football. Because all of these lists are – here's the thing about football. Football is the hardest thing in the world to predict. Remember last year they were telling you how good Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to be in Washington and with their front four and that defense that you're not going to be able to run against them. They are going to you know, basically repeat as division champs. That's what the thing was last year. You know, people looked at the Cincinnati Bengals and they're like, yeah, the Bengals, you know, they're going to be the bottom of their division as always, and they stink. And here it was, Cincinnati is in the Super Bowl. But for some reason, the talking heads will never give credit to anybody in the Dallas Cowboys uniform. And it's my pretense that they're actually putting chips on the shoulders of all of the Dallas Cowboys players. That literally, they are disrespecting him to the point where these guys are going to want to go out and just basically shove it in the face of these guys, these idiots. Case in point here. Let, let, me, let me flip up cameras here with you guys. Case in point, let's go to what's happened with Madden. Okay, Madden football. Okay, John Madden, rest his soul. And maybe this is where the problem starts. Here it is. They have their linebacker rating core. And somehow, Micah Parsons, who was rookie of the year, who had as many first place votes for NFL defensive player of the year as Aaron Donald, who was one of the highest sack getters as a defensive end, and played extraordinarily great as a linebacker. Somehow he's not even in the top five. Here's the list. Fred Warner, you know, a great linebacker. He, he got a 94. My man Demario Davis. I can't argue about Demario. Demario has been a beast. I told you guys, I told you guys when he was leading the Jets, that was the guy for us, just like I told you guys about Calais Campbell when he left Arizona. But nobody, you know, I, I'm just a guy with the day job of voodoo doll. The, you know, Stephen Jones is not going to listen to me, but, but be that as it may. Levante David, Bobby Wagner, Devarius Leonard, Raquan Smith, and then they have Micah Parsons at an 88 rating. 88. How you drop him to an 88? I believe he was a 92 last year. What, am I wrong on that? I, I thought he finished up like 92 rate. I, maybe I'm wrong. But he's tied with Eric Kendricks? Are you serious? And see, this, this is what's, what's amazing to me because you, you've told Zeke Elliott that he's toast, that he needs to be benched, that he sucks. <laughs> that come from? Oh, that must be ESPN. You, you basically told um, Zeke Elliott that he's done, that he sucks. Now, here's, here's an interesting thing for you guys. When it comes to Zeke Elliott, I have been talking about the first eight games of the season. First eight games of the season, Zeke Elliott was averaging four – point eight yards per game i was reading an article today and they actually quantified it and they went through the first four games before the pcl injury zeke elliott 
was averaging 5.3 yards a carry the first four games before the PCL injury. And that was, of course, before we had the problems on the offensive line. Zeke Elliott was on pace because he was averaging about 85 yards a game. He was on pace, and I, I, did a, I know I did some videos during that time last year, and I was going through, but, you know, I got so many thousands of videos, it's hard to find them. But Zeke Elliott was on pace for 1,446 yards, which would have put him second in the NFL in rushing last year. Now, I'm not trying to say that Zeke Elliott is the same guy he was as a rookie. But to say that that guy was washed up, I mean, you can directly point to a PCL tear in his knee was the difference of him going downhill that they never rested even a single game. Not one game. So if I'm Zeke Elliott, I've got a chip on my shoulder to prove that I'm not done as also too to prove that I, I want to be here next year because I don't have any guaranteed money and I want to make sure that I leave no doubt on the field. If I'm Micah Parsons, who was defensive rookie of the year, getting first place votes for defensive player of the year, and they're telling me on Madden that I'm an 88, I feel like I got a lot out here to prove, to show you how good I am. If I'm Trayvon Diggs and they tell me that, you know, I am just, you know, a, a cornerback that's just a showboat that can only thing he can do is get interceptions, but I'm not a really great corner. I've got a chip on my shoulder to show you guys how good I am. Seriously. And if I'm Dak Prescott, after knowing that I came back from a catastrophic, potentially career ending type injury, had a calf strain, had shoulder throwing issues in training camp and couldn't work out. And they're telling me that I'm just average. I've got a chip on my shoulder. I'm going to go out here and show your ass that I'm 100 times better than Jalen Hurts because we've heard the supposed Dallas Cowboy fan, Skip Bayless, literally say, I trust Jalen Hurts more than I do Dak Prescott right now. But then again, Skip Bayless last year said he also trusted Tim Tebow more than he trusts Dak Prescott. So if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, especially after going 12-5, and five, dominating my division, not, not, even, not, not even close, not even close, kicking their teeth in, Beating the Eagles, scoring like 92 points. I'm kind of pissed off. I'm kind of ready to prove to the world that you're a bunch of freaking idiots. Because I have to say, What the hell's going on out here? Seriously. Seriously. The amount of disrespect that the Cowboys get. I hope becomes motivating factors for the team to want to show up, show off, and kick people's teeth in. Because I believe that the whole Dallas Cowboys team has been disrespected and has been underrated and that they're a lot better than what people will give them credit for. So with that being said, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you guys as well as you ladies listening in. Um, I'm enjoying, I, I almost forget how nice it is to be sitting out here at the outdoor set. You know, I got so much space here. We're going to be doing a few changes to it to get ready for the season. And um, actually, let me say to the mailman, shout out to the mailman. I actually have the first guest already for week number one that wants to be here. And that's my man, Brian Green, a.k.a. Cone Boy, the mailman. So I can't wait till we get out here and we have the place full of fans that we've got TV, got, got, got football on the big screen TV right here, and we will be watching the Dallas Cowboys instead of listening to all the bullshit that is the talking heads. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, 
We'll see you soon. For us today, and we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! And five, four, three... That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album.